Hey everybody, uh, in this stream we're going to be taking a look at some legendary options that we have available in Shadowlands. Now, this is part one of, you know, taking a look at these legendaries because what we're mainly going to do in this one is go through and look at the different options that are available. We're not actually going to take these out and test them because that's going to be really time consuming for all the classes. Really what I want to do is kind of um, get in and look at just kind of what the options are and how they might potentially change up some of the play styles and everything. Um, this is kind of sort of continuation from the uh, Monk and Warlock deep dive video that I did. So if you're joining me again from that stream, thank you. If not, uh, then welcome. And uh, we did just take a look at the end of that stream at the Monk legendary uh options but we're gonna do it again real quick uh just to make sure that if you're coming into this video fresh without having watched that other stream uh you're gonna be able to check those out as well now the way legendaries are currently set up is there are four options that are sort of class wide so you can have access to those regardless of your specialization and then there are four options that are spec specific so for your typical three spec class you're going to have 12 different legendary power options across the board but it's usually going to wind up at uh eight a piece uh eight per specialization um <clears throat> when you are crafting a legendary what you're actually going to do is you're going to bring a base item like a helmet or pants or whatever which is they're going to come from professions so crafters are gonna make these baseline items and you socket those right in here. And we might actually be able to make one. Uh, I think Runetar here kind of has the all the base stuff. Yeah, so you'll take like the Umbra Hide Helm, okay? And you're gonna take the Umbra Hide Helm and then you're also gonna want to have a couple of runes. So we're on Brewmaster Monk. Let's just grab Mastery and Haste for whatever reason. And then we're gonna want to have this uh, currency here too, Carcerus. Okay, so the process is this. You learn legendary powers, which we've done. You get Carcerus currency. You bring a base level item plus two runes. And you come in here and you talk to the rune carver. And you say, I wanna craft a legendary item. So, if we click over here, these are all the legendary power options that are available. When we socket in an item, some of those options are no longer going to be available because some legendary powers are slot specific. So right now, the only legendary power that I can put on a helm is Invoker's Delight, uh, which is a generic Monk legendary power, not a brewmaster specific one. So if I were wanting to get a brewmaster specific um, legendary power, I would need to bring a different base level item. So once we've picked a base level item and we've picked a legendary power that goes with it, then you also are going to slot in a couple of runes. It looks like my interface may be bugged out there a little bit. So we're gonna drop in our helm and then we can select our legendary power and then we're gonna put in our runes. So <clears throat> if we take a look at this, when you are putting your base level item in, it has nothing, but it's got an item level and it has armor and your level requirement. Pick your legendary, uh, power and it's going to add in your stats so now this helmet has plus 50 agility plus 77 stamina and it says add secondary add secondary that's what the runes do the runes let you control what the secondary stats are for your legendary weapons so now those runes that we picked up we've got a haste rune so now we have 53 haste and we have a mastery rune so now we have 53 mastery and you can see here the alt if we're switched over to mist weaver for whatever reason it's going to swap out the agility for the intellect so now we spend 100 carceris and we can get this bug report out of the way we can create this 
And now we have our legendary item. So we can come in here and here it is, the Umbra Hide Helm, and we can equip it if we want to. And now we've got the legendary power as well as the, as the stats and all that kind of good stuff. Now at the launch of Shadowlands, you're only going to be allowed to have one legendary power period. Like, um, so on your, if I'm Brewmaster Monk, I cannot equip multiple legendary items, just a single one. So you have to pick, uh, which legendary power you want. So I wanted to go over like how the system works and what the rules are just to give you an idea that, uh, of kind of how everything works here. But what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the power. So we're not going to build any more legendary items. We will build the legendary items and check out all the powers in practice by equipping the items that we create in future videos. But for now, this is more just kind of like a, a showcase of your options for each class. So we can click over here and look at select a legendary power. So for the monk, we've got nothing. Uh, we've got invoker's delight. So this is going to gain haste for some kind of number until canceled after summoning your celestial. So when you use your celestial, which for the brewmaster is going to be invoke now Zao, now Zao, I don't know, invoke the black ox. Uh, once you do that, you're going to gain some haste with this legendary. This one gives roll an additional charge, which is kind of interesting because if you just want to roll all the time, there you go. Uh, fatal touch, touch of death cooldown is reduced by 60 and touch of death is really sweet on monk in Shadowlands now. So it's a pretty cool effect. Those are your generic monk ones. You're going to see those on everyone regardless of spec. For Brewmaster specifically, we have Flaming Kicks. It says your breath of fire ignites your right leg in flame for 8 seconds, causing your blackout kick and spinning crane kick to deal 30% additional damage as fire and refresh the duration of your breath of flame on the target. Then we have Storm Stout's Last Gasp. Keg Smash deals 30% additional damage and has one additional charge. So you can smash, smash, smash. Mighty Pour says Celestial Brew increases your armor by 15% for 7 seconds. Which we have that right here. Uh, this does some absorb damage. And then uh, you can purify stagger damage to increase it. And this is going to add uh, armor on top of that as well. And then your Purifying Brew has a 15% chance to not consume a charge. So that's our little stagger clear brew that we can use there. And then we have Face Palm. <laughs> Beautiful name. I, the names of these, some of them are pretty good. Uh, face Palm. Tiger Palm has a 10% chance to deal 300% of normal damage and reduce the remaining cooldown of your brews by an additional one second. So that's our options for Brewmaster. And what we're going to do is we're just going to switch specs and we're going to look at the other ones. Murphy says, first. Yeah. Jibba Jung says, hey, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> He, the jailer feels sad. Of course he does. All right, so for Mist Weaver, we have uh, probably my favorite here. Ancient Teachings of the Monastery. It says your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick heal for 50% of the damage done to an injured ally within 20 yards. So another Fist Weaving Enabler. Super sweet. Celestial Breath. Activating Thunder Focus T causes you to... Exhale the breath of Yulon, healing up to six allies within 15 yards for 2,600 over two seconds. It's a pretty solid heal. Um, if you look, our Enveloping Mist is doing 3,600. Soothing Mist is 5,400 over 7.6 seconds. So this is a, you know, six ally AOE 2,600 over two seconds. Pretty good burst of healing. Soothing Focus says healing with Enveloping Mist or Vivify while channeling Soothing Mist increases their healing done by 6% and reduces their mana cost by 10%, and this stacks up to three times. When your Soothing Mist's channel ends, this effect is canceled. So while you're channeling Enveloping Mists, you can do like Vivify, 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 and that'll stack up to three times uh, to increase healing done by 18% and reduce mana cost by 30%. And then Uplifting Mist 
Renewing Mists applies extended life to the initial target, instantly healing them for 50, which is not very much, and increasing all healing done to them by 15% for 12 seconds. When you heal with Enveloping Mist or Vivify, 50% of the heal is also applied to targets with your extended life effect. So that's what we got for Mist Weaver. Windwalker's up next. And if you guys want to see a particular class next, just throw it in the chat and we'll go there. We're going to cover them uh, all, but if you've got one you want to see right away, just let me know. So we have Zwin's Battle Gear. When Fist of Fury ends, the critical strike chance of Rising Sun Kick is increased by 30% for 5 seconds. Rising Sun Kick critical strikes reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury by 1.5 seconds. So you got some synergy there with like Fist of Fury into a you know, high critical chance of Rising Sun and then Rising Sun criticals bringing your Fist of Fury back around. So just kind of like a cool cycle of Fist of Fury into Rising Sun Kick. Which I believe, yeah, if you throw some Whirling Dragon Punch in there, uh, that might be a fun like trio of abilities to use. Then we have Rushing Tiger Palm. This one sounds super cool. Uh, Tiger Palm now has a 10 yard range and increases your critical strike chance for 25% for six seconds on the target. When used, you instantly dash to the target. That sounds super fun. The increased critical strike effect cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds per target. If you're out there in the open world, just, you know, questing and leveling and stuff like your target better be dead within 30 seconds. So, uh, that part's not super relevant. I think it's more for, uh, um, bossing and stuff like that. Well, it lasts for six seconds, but hopefully you'll blow stuff out of the water and it's just going to be fun. I think to dash around with tiger palm with the 10 yard range. Pressure release. When you deal damage to a target with Fist of Fury, you gain a stack of Chi energy up to a maximum of 20 stacks. Using Expel Harm will cause the energy to detonate in a Chi explosion, dealing 379 damage to all enemies within 8 yards. The damage is increased by 5% for each stack of Chi energy, so you can basically double the damage. And then we have the Emperor's Capacitator. No, it's Capacitor. You got me, Shaman Guides. Uh, I got ragged on so bad for that. And I knew I was doing it too, but I don't know. I've just always said Capacitated Tater because taters. <laughs> the Emperor's Capacitor. Chi Spenders increase the damage of your next Crackling Jade Lightning by 100% and reduce its cost by 5%, stacking up to 20 times. So you can just get like a huge insane crackling jade lightning with this now out of all these I, i'll probably go with russian tiger palm because that's just that's my style all right so we're going to take a look at another class that's all the current legendary options for the monk we're going to pop out over here so that we can log out pretty quickly and just jump in on another on another class All right, let's check out another class that has. Oh, it booted me out of the game. Sometimes it does that when I log log out of a character. I think we'll go through all the leather classes since I started with a monk there. Let's jump in and check out Druid. Druid's going to have a ton. <laughs> Uh, we've got four specializations on Druid, so that's a lot of legendary powers to go through. Okay, and we are way out here in Maldraxxus. All my characters are kind of in random places because uh, when doing the testing, sometimes, like, the Flight Master just ain't there. <laughs> There's a lot of missing NPCs in the beta, based on what I've seen. So let's go find our big Tauren friend. There he is. 
So he will take us directly over to the Rune Carver. Got this sweet vanilla WoW load screen at the moment. Which is kind of weird to me. I don't know why they don't use... They have a Shadowlands one. I don't know why they don't use it. All right, so we are currently feral. All right, so baseline druid powers, all power four. When moonfire, rake, rip, or rejuvenation are on a single target, their effects are increased by 30%. Okay. Uh, your damage over time effects occur 25% more quickly and your healing over time effects occur 10% more quickly. Wow, these are actually pretty like solid all around. And then the effects of thick hide, astral influence, feline swiftness, and Ysera's gift increased by a hundred percent. When you shift into your affinities form, you gain heart of the wild for 15 seconds once every one minute. Wow. That's kind of cool. So if you're not familiar, if you haven't watched uh the Druid Deep Dives, um so all those abilities, the kite, astral influence, etc., those are tied to your balance. So like you get six yards for balance, uh, reduced damage taken by 12%, heal for 6%. That's insane. And then uh, Heart of the Wild's a new talent that basically just gives you a super pumped up form of your affinity abilities. And so getting that for 15 seconds, once every minute, by shifting is pretty awesome considering that talent is uh, a 45 second uh, buff with a five minute cooldown. That's that's pretty cool. I like that a lot actually. All right, and then for Feral, it looks like we have three currently. Apex Predator's Craving. Rip damage has a 4% chance to make your next Ferocious Bite free and deal maximum damage. That's kind of insane. Tiger's Fury causes your next finishing move to restore three combo points. Okay. So there's like a Tiger's Fury talent build you could get into that that might be pretty good in. And then Berserk in bear form grants 25% increased damage, 25% leech, and kicks you out of the game. Oh, no, we're back. <laughs> that was weird. And immunity to effects that cause loss of control of your character. Why? Why do you got to boot me out of the game? What did it do? Okay, so it didn't actually boot me out of the game, but it booted me out of the game on, uh, on my streaming program. So we're going to jump back in. Weird beta stuff. You got to love it. Hunter. Okay, we'll do Hunter. We'll do uh, we'll do the leather classes, then we'll do the male class. Feral Druids may be god tier, finally. Uh, those are some pretty nice sounding uh, abilities there, actually. I, Me, personally, for the way I like to play Druid, I really like the um, Heart of the Wild, like, synergy one there, where you can, like, get that buff. Like, in, just in general, I, I, I really like that one. But some of these other ones sound good, too. I really like this Apex C P Predators one. Just, you know, this is just first impressions reading them, right? No testing. Uh, those sound pretty cool. Uh, let's do Balance. Balance got some pretty significant updates uh, to their system. So some of these, I don't even know if I'll be able to, like, really evaluate them. Why do we have five in here? Oh, the, what, the feral power is in here? Clear cast abilities generate 25% of their energy cost, and your maximum energy is increased by 60. Holy cow. Okay, so we've got two that we can look at for balance. Star Surge and Star, Starfall each have a 15% chance to make the other free. Okay. Primordial Arcanic Pulsar. Every 400 astral power spent grants celestial alignment for nine seconds and celestial alignment now uh, gives you the bonuses of, let's see, both eclipses. And if you're not familiar with the eclipse system, check out the Druid Deep Dive. 
or hit up Wowhead or whatever. Um, that's kind of the significant new change to balance in Shadowlands. Uh, so every 400 astral power spent. So astral power you have to build up. That's a fairly high amount of astral power, I think. I don't know. I'm not excited about either one of those, if I'm being honest. Just, just first glance, not crazy about them. You had me at booted. Best legendary ever. Literally just boots you out the game. All right, so for Guardian, we got three we can look at. A lot of these don't have names. Thrash has 20% increased damage, 30% 30% increased radius. 11-yard range. Okay, that just jumps it up to like 15. I mean, that's still, that's not nothing. And can stack one additional time. Okay, that's a little bit, <laughs> that's more significant. Uh, four stacks. Four stacks of Thrash sounds pretty nasty, especially with 20% increased damage. Uh, bark Skin reduces damage by an additional 15%. When it begins and ends, you gain Iron Fur and Frenzied Regeneration. Wow. That's every minute. Every minute? Gain Iron Fur and Frenzied Regeneration? When it begins and ends. That seems silly. <laughs> uh, that's going to be fun to play around with. Thrash has a 15% chance to trigger an additional Thrash. How are you going to put that on the same row as these? I mean, I I get it, but come on. like Those just seem way more interesting. I don't know. I could be missing something. I miss a lot of things with the mathy sort of abilities before I actually get to test them and be like, oh, yeah, that's good. I get caught up in the, ooh, shiny, like, pretty often. Hey, we have all the resto stuff to look at. Memory of the Mother Tree. Wild Growth has a 25% chance to cause your next rejuvenation or regrowth to apply to two additional allies within 20 yards of the target. Wow. The Dark Titan's Lesson. You may life bloom two targets at once, and life bloom's final healing is increased by 200%. Huh. Nice. Swift Men no longer consumes a heal over time effect and extends the duration of your heal over time effects on the target by 10 seconds. So they changed Swiftman back to its old version, and this cancels that out, I guess, if you really like the current play style of Swiftman. And then Rejuvenation Healing has a 2% chance to create a new rejuvenation on a nearby target. Wow, this is kind of good. I like this, uh, this idea of, like, like, AoE healing just for the hell of it on Resto Druid. That's kind of cool. All right, that's Druid. So we'll do Hunter next. I got a request for Hunter. We're just going to jump straight to it. If I don't have a request, we'll finish off the, the leather classes. But if you do have a class that you want to see uh, next, just throw it in chat, and we'll do that one after Hunter. All right, I got a hunter somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in all these characters. I don't want this one. Let's do this one. Paladin. I'm down with Paladin. Paladin, DK. Okay, we're queuing them up. You guys throw them in chat. We'll just queue them up. <clears throat> also, if you're liking the stream, throw a, throw a like on it. Let YouTube know that you're having a good time. And me, let me know. Okay, so we're checking out Hunter. Can anything make me like Beast Mastery Hunter? I don't know. By the way, no offense if I say something bad about your favorite spec. Like I said, for me, it all comes down to what I have fun with and what I enjoy, uh, which totally may not be the same thing as you. Uh... Do I keep, I'm trying to get to this guy faster. 
Okay, so he is on the north side. So wherever I come in, I'm going to hit that, like, northwest side. Ba -dum. Okay, so currently we are Beast Mastery. So we'll answer my question pretty quick. Okay, so for hunters in general, we've got Call of the Wild. The cooldown of all your aspects is reduced by 25%. Mm, you've kind of got a talent that does that. Do, do we all have a talent that does that? Born to be wild. So that's Cheetah and Turtle. But... I wonder if that counts for, is it Hawk or Evil? Eagle. I can never remember. Okay. I mean, that's not overly exciting. Not that it's bad. It's just not like, woo. Whenever a trap is triggered, gain 25 focus. Oh, this is Nessing Wary's trapping apparatus. Mm okay. Soul Forge Embers. Launching a, fl oh, this is cool. Launching a flare into your tar trap causes all enemies inside of the tar trap to burn for... 10,000 fire damage. Whoa. That is a huge number. Holy crap, that is a huge number. For for the level squish, that's insane. Why? Are there big cooldowns here? Flare, 20 second cooldown. And Tar Trap, right? Tar Trap has a 30 second. That's insane. What the hell? Every... 30 seconds you could just be like tar trap flare and just destroy everything <laughs> holy crap oh man that's pretty sweet uh craven stratagem feign death cooldown reduced by 15 seconds and feign death now removes most negative status effects from yourself actually that's pretty convenient but come on are you kidding me that number has got to change I imagine. I mean, I don't know. It does take two abilities and you got to combo them. And, but man, that is nuts. I think the highest damage I've seen on any ability so far has been five to 6,000 for perspective. That's stupid. Uh, beast mastery, dire command. Kill command has a 10% chance to also summon a dire beast to attack your target. That's cool. That's got flavor. I like it. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> they got to change the number on that. Uh, Flame Walker's Cobra Sting. Cobra Shot has a 10% chance to make your next kill command consume, consume no focus. That's kind of like a mathy one. Not thrilling, but probably good. Kapla? Is, qua, qua, I don't know. Eridun War Order. Barb Shot reduces the cooldown of kill command by 4 seconds. Wow. That's that's kind of stupid. Wow. Uh Rylax Stalker's Piercing Fangs. While Bestial Wrath is active, your pet's critical damage dealt is increased by 30%. Once again, that's like a mathy legendary ability there. Uh let's do survival. I'm most excited about Marksmanship Hunter this expansion. What's your favorite favorite Covenant transmog so far? I am like pretty nuts about the Necrolord plate armor. It looks awesome. All right, survival. This is a spec that I have liked in the past, and I feel they just kind of like made a little bit boring. So can we get it spicy? Wildfire Cluster. Wildfire Bomb drops an additional cluster of bombs around the target, each exploding for 364 fire damage. Yep, that's already a little bit spicier. Uh, Rylax Stalker's Confounding Strikes. Raptor Strike has a 10% chance to add a charge to Wildfire Bomb. That could be cool. I found in practice 10% doesn't feel very good. Like, it, it happens... Sometimes you get a charge back, but it, it doesn't like it's not frequent enough that it it feels good to play. So I don't know. 
Latent Poison Injectors. Serpent Sting's damage applies latent poison to the target, stacking up to 10 times. Raptor Strike consumes all stacks of latent poison, dealing 110 nature damage to the target per stack consumed. Okay, so Serpent Sting is dealing... Uh, it doesn't say... I imagine it's dealing something like damage every second, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Let's like, yeah, it's another mathy one. Butcher's Bone Fragments. Raptor Strike increases the damage of your next carve by 10%, stacking up to 10 times. Meh. I think I'd probably do this Wildfire Cluster or, I don't know, Soul Forge Embers, maybe. Marksmanship, that's what the testing is going to be for, right? To like the ones that just sound kind of boring on paper are usually the ones that kind of feel good once you get out there and test them out. Okay, marksmanship. True shot also reduces the focus cost of all your abilities by 30%. Okay. Surging shots. Rapid fire deals 15% additional damage, and aim shot has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of rapid fire. Okay, there's a couple of like rapid fire builds that you can do. That might be kind of cool to, to work into those. Uh, when aimed shot hits multiple targets from the trick shot effect, three enemies struck by aim shot also get hit by an arcane shot. <laughs> Serpent stalker's trickery. That sounds fun. <laughs> I just love aim shot. Like whatever I can do with aim shot, I'm in. Secrets of the Unblinking Vigil. When you gain the Trick Shots effect, you have a 50% chance for it to not be consumed by your next aim shot or rapid fire. Okay. There's a build that I like with Marksman, and like none of this really applies all that much to it. So that's why I'm, like, I'm not quite as excited. Um, this... Uh, Dead Eye. Oh, Dead Eye is a new talent and it's absolutely disgusting on Marksmanship Hunter. And I'm going to play the hell out of this build. Um, and then I'm just going to tar trap stuff. That's the takeaway for Hunter. Throw your flare in your tar trap and then just annihilate everything. <laughs> okay, so Paladin is next. We got Paladin, then DK, then Demon Hunter. And then, uh, did I miss Priest somewhere in there? I just, my eyes glaze over sometimes. <laughs> By no offense, he, he means all but Priest. <laughs> okay, that's where Priest came from. Good. Uh, so Paladin, DK, Demon Hunter. If you've got anything else, uh, let me know. We'll throw it in the queue. Paladin. Uh, this one I haven't logged into, so it should go straight to town. Paladin currently is my number one class. Uh, Prop Paladin is the spec that I think I'm considering maining more than any other ones. So I'm pretty pumped to check these out. All right, so I need to go this way. Kind of really thrown off by these characters that this is present on. Let's go. We are, and we're prot too. All right, here we go. Generic Paladin Legendaries. Uther's Guard. Your Blessing of Freedom, Blessing of Sacrifice, and Blessing of Protection cooldowns are reduced by one second per holy power spent. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I really couldn't. Uh, of Dusk and Dawn, when you reach five holy power, you gain Blessing of Dawn. When you reach zero holy power, you gain Blessing of Dusk. Blessing of Dawn, your damage and healing is increased by 6% for 10 seconds. Blessing of Dusk, your damage taken is reduced by 6% for 10 seconds. That seems okay. 
The Arbiter's Judgment. Judgment has a 50% chance to reduce the cost of your next Holy Power Spender by one. That's actually kind of cool. And Holy Avengers Engraved Sigil. Uh, your Avengers Shield has a 50% chance to have its cooldown instantly reset when it's used. That seems very prop paladin. <laughs> uh, that's probably fun. I like to spam the hell out of the shield. So, yeah. The Ardent Protector Sanctum reduces damage taken while Ardent Defender is active by an additional 10%. And when you activate Ardent Defender, it will also apply to the nearest ally within 15 yards. Oh, that's cool. Full work of Righteous Fury. Each target hit by Avenger's shield increases the damage of your next shield of the righteous by 40%. Man, that's an easy like 120% damage on shield of the righteous. Like easy. But it's also bad, I guess, if you go down to single target. Not bad, but not as near not nearly as good. Reign of Endless Kings. When you drop below 20% health, you become infused with the Guardian of Ancient Kings for 4 seconds. This cannot occur again for 45 seconds. So that's going to give us 50% damage reduction for 8 seconds. Okay, and then Liadrin's Fury Reborn and Casting Avenging Wrath or any Forbearance ability grants 5 Holy Power. I think that is the... Yeah, that's the other generic one. It should be, because all specializations have access to Avenging Wrath now. Uh, man, I think I'd probably take the Sigil. Or maybe Dawn, Dusk and Dawn. Or maybe Arbiter's Judgment. There's, uh, there's some, like, good ones in there, but none that I'm like, yes, that's the one I want to take. All right, let's check out Holy. <laughs> We're going to do Priest is going to be after Demon Hunter now. Uh, Holy Paladin. Yep, there it is. Liadrin's Fury You're Born. So that is the other one. Uh, wow, these all look the same. Shock Barrier. Holy Shock protects the target with a shield of Holy Light for 18 seconds, absorbing up to 639 damage every six seconds. That's actually kind of cool shadow breaker dawn of the sun light of dawn's range is increased to 40 yards whoa <laughs> okay and all allies inside your light of dawn receive 10 percent increased healing from your spells for six seconds like <laughs> okay <laughs> a 40 yard light of dawn that's a little <laughs> that's a little insane uh inflorescence of the sun well infusion of light has one additional charge and its effects are increased by 20 percent mm, oh, okay got it got it got it i just want to like line of dawn <laughs> for 40 yards oh uh, that seems <laughs> that seems fun all right, and Rhett, which uh, is actually pretty fun. All right, we've got Tempest of the Lightbringer. Pro projects Divine Storm forward 20 yards, damaging all enemies in its path. Also increases damage dealt by Divine Storm by 20%. Okay, <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, Relentless Inquisitor. Spending Holy Power grants you 20 haste per Holy Power spent for 12 seconds, stacking up to 20 times. Wow, that's actually... That's a math one that even I'm like, okay. <laughs> Let's go. Badge of the Mad Paragon. Hammer of Wrath extends Avenging Wrath by 2 seconds and deals 20% additional damage. Oh, man. I'm thinking of the Torghast runs, like, already. With the, cause you you can you can get additional charges for Hammer of Wrath, uh, and you can get like Avenging Wrath at the start of the yeah okay, that that could be cool. 
replaces okay final verdict replaces templar's verdict with final verdict a devastating strike that deals 1800 holy damage has a 50 percent chance to activate hammer of wrath and reset its cooldown so wait 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 it'll cast hammer of wrath like on its own and reset its cooldown for an additional cast oh well like okay so the health doesn't matter here so how much our templar's verdict is doing Okay, 1836 holy damage. So it does the same thing, but there's a 50% chance to just hammer of wrath something in the face for an additional 1100 damage. Okay, so it's to like pump your single target damage pretty much. All right, that was Paladin. Um, yeah, obviously the one that had the most impact on me was that like Light of Dawn increase to 40 yards thing <laughs> that's a little bit crazy pelican 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 death knight we're doing death knight next death knight is also pretty fun i actually liked two-handed frost and i was thinking about it and i kind of like the way like the dark iron death knight looked in the uh the other live stream i don't know i have a worgen death knight right now and I really like the uh, having the extra movement ability, but yeah, I like the, where, where are you at? Yeah. Like I said, if you've got a uh, class we haven't gone over that you want to see first, let me know. Otherwise we're doing rogue next, I think. Or after demon hunter, after priest, we'll do rogue. All right, let's use all our considerable demon hunter movement abilities to get over there a little bit faster. I'm actually pretty excited to see these. Because blood still feels like it's in a good spot, but it, it feels... Or not blood. Well, yeah, blood. But DK in general just kind of feels like the same. Which is not a bad thing, because I think it feels pretty good in BFA. All right. So we have uh, our generics. Super Strain, your Frost Fever, Blood Plague, and Virulent Plague also apply the other two diseases. Whoa, that's cool. Super Strain. <laughs> That's so, so current. It's the world meta. <laughs> uh, pheromones. You and your minions gain 10% haste while you are inside your death and decay, and enemies damaged by your death and decay have a chance to cower in place for three seconds. 10% uh, haste is no joke. Death's Embrace. Increases the duration of anti-magic shell by 100%, and any damage it absorbs heals you. Okay, eh. Grip of the Everlasting. For three seconds after casting Grip, Death Grip, you may cast the spell a second time without regard for its cooldown. This was a talent that they got rid of, right? I think. Or a Legion ability. I can't remember. Alright, so we are unholy right now. Reanimated Shambler. Your attacks have a chance to summon a super zombie that shambles forward and... and it, are you... What? What? I'm so in. Summon a super zombie that shambles forward and explodes, dealing 1,500 shadow damage, which is pretty sick, and applying a festering wound to eight nearby enemies. I don't know what the chance is, but I'm in. A super zombie? An exploding super zombie? Hell yeah. Uh, Frenzy Monstrosity. Dark Transformation also increases the attack speed and damage of you and your monstrosity by 20%. Death Certainty. Death Strike and Death Coil did deal 10% increased damage and reduce the remaining cooldown of Death and Decay by 2 seconds. 
And Deadliest Coil. <laughs> Reduces the runic power cost of Death Coil by 10, which I think is like 25%. Yeah, 25%. And Death Coil increases the duration of Dark Transformation by 2 seconds. So, yeah, there's definitely like some mathy synergy stuff going. Come on! Super Zombie that explodes all day. Oh, yeah, there was a talent to reset grip on XP or honor. Is that still there? Mm, yeah, there it is. Death's Reach. Okay. All right, let's switch to Frost. If you're having fun checking out the legendaries with me, uh, give the video a like. Definitely would appreciate that. Okay, so for Frost, what do we got? Coltira's Favor. Obliterate deals 10% increased damage and has a 15% chance to refund two runes. I do like to cast Obliterate, so that's pretty fun. Uh, Biting Cold. Remorseless Winter's damage is increased by 15%. The first time Remorseless Winter dam deals damage to three different enemies, you gain Rhyme. Oh, interesting. And we're missing one. So the last one here is absolute zero. Frostworm's Fury, which is baseline for Frost now, no longer a talent, has 50% reduced cooldown. Okay, so that's putting us at a 1.5 minute cooldown and freezes all enemies hit for three seconds. So every one and a half minutes, you can just straight up deal 4,300 Frost damage to something to a bunch of somethings, which is a really good chunk of damage uh, with the current level scaling. Okay. Still not an exploding super zombie, but you know. Blood, don't let me down. Brindor, Brindor, whatever. Bees might. <laughs> uh, Death Strike refunds 15% of runic power spent and it heals you for more than 10%. If it heals you for more than 10% of your maximum health. Pretty easy to do. Crimson Rune Weapon. When a charge of bone shield is consumed, the cooldown of Dancing Rune Weapon is reduced by 30 seconds? Holy crap. Really? Is that supposed to be 30 seconds? Or 0.3 seconds. <laughs> or... Uh. Okay. Additionally, when Dancing Rune Weapon fades, your rune regeneration rate is increased by 40% for 10 seconds. 30 seconds seems too good. Like, that's... That's your literally just Dancing Rune Weapon up, like, 95% of the time. Gorfiend's Domination. Heart Strike reduces the remaining cooldown on Vampiric Blood by two seconds. <laughs> vampiric Aura. Your Vampiric Blood ability also affects all party members for 50% of the effect that it has on you. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Not as exciting as I had hoped. But, man, that Dancing Rune Weapon, those numbers cannot be right. 30 seconds off every time a Bone Shield charge gets consumed. That's four shield charges, and you have the thing off cooldown already. That's insane. I do like Shiny. I'm glad you liked my world meta joke, Lost. I was kind of proud of that one. Uh, So what's next? Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter's next. All right. Uh, that one's in Arden Wield. Uh, that one's in Argamar. Demon Hunter. -la 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 -la. Oh, boom, boom. So we're going to fly through this one. We've only got two specializations to look at. <clears throat> Yeah.
Demon Hunter, I think, you know, Demon Hunter's fun. They didn't do anything super crazy to it, so... I, I can't say that I... I definitely will play it, but I played it a good amount in BFA, too. So, I'm kind of wanting to change it up a little bit. So, we are currently Havoc. Let's take a look at what our options are here. So, generics, we got Sigil of the Illidari, casting I-Beam, uh, which... No, that's... Is that? No. Maybe not generic. I can't remember. I can't remember if they made... Did they make... No, they did not make I-Beam for both specializations. Okay, so this is definitely uh, Havoc. Uh, casting I-Beam summons an allied Vengeance Demon Hunter who cast Fell Devastation, which is the Vengeance version of I-Beam, basically. Uh, that sounds fun, actually. Uh, Apex Empowerment. So this sounds like a generic one. Metamorphosis increases your size, movement speed, and melee range by 100%. Okay. Dark Glare Medallion. I-Beam has a 20% chance to not incur its cooldown. That's a little insane, considering how good I-Beam is. Darkest Hour. You automatically trigger darkest darkness when you fall below 35% health. This effect can only occur once every two minutes. That sounds like just a generic talent. That doesn't sound like a legendary ability. What's the cooldown on darkness? Five minutes? So every two minutes? Okay, that makes a little more sense. So if you fall below health, 35% health, more often than every five minutes, then maybe that makes sense. Inner Demons. Chaos Strike has a chance to unleash your inner demon, causing it to crash into your target and deal 1,400 chaos damage to all nearby enemies. Chaos Theory, Blade Dance has a 10% chance to grant you Chaotic Blades, increasing the damage of Chaos Strike by 25%, and its chance to resun, refund Fury by an additional 60% for 8 seconds. Okay, that totally just mathed over my head right there. I like zoned out halfway through reading that. Blade Dance, 10% chance for Chaotic Blades, which makes your Chaos Strike hit harder and increases okay so the chance is 40 percent, so it bumps it up to a hundred percent uh chance to refund fury got it erratic fell core the cooldown of fell rush is reduced by 30 percent that's a lot of fell rushing and there's like a new talent that does something with fell rush too do, 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 do. Uh, which one is it? Unbound Chaos. Activating Immolation Aura will cause your inner demon to slam into nearby enemies at the end of your fell rush, dealing 2300 chaos damage. So you combo that with this, and you can fell rush all the time, but you're still limited by Immolation Aura. Oh, then there's Momentum. Fell rush increases your damage done by 15% for 6 seconds, and that legendary basically puts you at like six, seven seconds on your cooldown. So constant 15% damage increase. That's a little nuts. Fell Bombardment. Immolation Aura, which is available to both specializations now, baseline. Damage has a chance to grant you a stack of Fell Bombardment, increasing the damage of your next Glaive Throw by 20% and launching an additional glaive at a nearby target. This effect stacks up to five times. So can you get 100% and like hitting six targets? Or is that 100% but you're still just hitting two? I'm thinking you hit six. That sounds like it's probably going to be like a pretty fun thing to watch happen on screen. But I don't know. I probably would pick something else. All right, let's check out Vengeance. Hey, are you being listed on the search engine? I just live streamed and it's not showing my stream. I have no idea. I normally don't even check. Okay, so we've got Spirit of the Darkness Flame. Your fiery brand now heals you for 100% of the damage done. 
and each enemy hit by your sigil flame increases the instant damage of your next fiery brand by 15%, stacking up to 15 times. Wow. That's actually a little nuts. So, I mean, on average, you're probably going to hit like four or five enemies. So you're looking at 60... 75% increased damage on Fiery Brand. It's going to deal 1,500 plus 448. So about 2,000 by default. Pump that up. Get maybe eh, close to like 3,000, 3,500, something like that. I don't know. I don't know if I math that right. Uh, but then 100% of that as healing. That's definitely not insignificant. That's close to like a 10% heal. Razalix Defilement. Soul Cleave reduces the remaining cooldown on a random sigil by 8 seconds. Eh. Cloak of Fell Flames. You take 15% reduced magic damage while Immolation Aura is active. Okay. And then Fiery Soul. Each soul fragment consumed by Soul Cleave reduces the cooldown of Fiery Brand by 2 seconds. <sighs> Those are not... Those are not the kind of things that get me excited. Maybe the fiery brand one is a little interesting. What was that their demon hunter? Priest? Priest. All right, we still have several classes left. If you ha have one that you want to see that we haven't gone over yet, you can throw it in the chat and we will queue it up after priest. Otherwise, priest is going to be uh, followed by rogue. Now, Priest is going to be a little bit interesting because I haven't actually done the class deep dive for Priest, so I'm not entirely up to date with all of the changes. So, uh, might not have like a good read on the legendary abilities. But, I mean, even that being said, without going and testing them out and stuff, you know, like this is just kind of like a first impressions, you know, see what your options are sort of thing anyway. We still have Warrior and Priest left for the class deep dives. That's going to be the last one coming up here pretty soon. And we'll have kind of taken a look at the updated core class mechanics for all for everything. Right, so here we go. We are spec'd Shadow. I don't even want to look at these. <laughs> Shadow is, I think, the specialization that's just in a bad spot. Uh, okay, Twins of the Sun Priestess. Power Infusion also grants you 100% of its effects when used on an ally. Okay, so that's a haste increased. Okay, so if you use it on an ally, you also get it for yourself. Cauterizing Shadows. When Shadow Word Pain expires on the target, five allies within 30 yards of the target are healed for 3% of their maximum health. That's kind of cool. Uh, another way to potentially heal on Shadow. Vault of the Heavens. Leap of Faith instead causes you to leap to your target and has two charges. Um, man, I like that just because Priest Mobility sucks. But I think you still have to use it on a party or raid member, which eh, isn't quite as useful. Painbreaker Psalm. Shadow Word Death consumes six seconds of Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch, instantly dealing that damage to the target and generating 10 insanity. That sounds kind of cool, actually. That, like, helps your finisher become even more of a finisher. Shadow Flame Prism. Your Shadow Fiend or Mindbender deals 20% additional damage as Shadow Flame damage. And the cooldown on Shadow Fiend and Mindbender is reduced by 40%. Okay. So we're talking like 12 seconds? No. I math that totally wrong. Yeah, that's fairly fairly significant. It's 
it's like 25 ish so yeah it's pretty like two minutes and then mind flay and eternal call of the void mind flay has a chance to spawn a void tendril that channels mind flay at your target for 15 seconds generating three insanity when it deals damage okay oh huh, that's interesting i wonder how high the chance is though and if you can spawn more than one All right, let's check out Holy. I think Holy is my least played spec in the game. Uh, okay, we got Twin Suns, Cauterizing Shadows, Vault of the Heavens. Okay, here we go. Zanshi, Return of Archbishop Benedictus. I saw a bunch of people really excited about this. After Spirit of Redemption expires, you will revive it up to 100% health. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Based on your effectiveness during Spirit of Redemption. After reviving, you cannot benefit from Spirit of Redemption for 10 minutes. So that's probably pretty sweet. Probably something to be excited about, I imagine. Uh, Harmonious Apparatus. Circle of Healing reduces the cooldown of Holy Word Sanctify. Prayer of Mending reduces the cooldown of Holy Word Serenity. And Holy Fire reduces the cooldown of Holy Word Chastise by 4 seconds. Aren't these the... Uh, Aren't these the things that they took out? I don't even remember what they're called. But they took them out of here. Uh, Lost, you're going to have to help me out. Yeah, you, I think you know what I'm talking about. There's something in here. They took them all out. That sounds like that's what they used to do. Mantras? Was it mantras? Or chakrams? Or something like that? Chakras? I don't know. Baked into the spells. Uh, flash, con flash Concentration. Each time you cast Flash Heal, your next heal cast within 15 seconds has its casting time reduced by 0.5 seconds and healing increased by 15%, stacking up to three times. Okay, so if you do a bunch of flash heals, you get a faster and more powerful regular heal. Yeah, chakras used to be a thing. Bah on flash. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's like, eh. Divine image. When you use a holy word spell, you have a chance to summon an image of a Naru to your side. For 15 seconds, whenever you cast a spell, the Naru will cast a similar spell. I don't know. That sounds like the kind of thing that I would pick up. Probably that or like the return of Archbishop. Archbishop. And Discipline. I play Discipline about as much as I play Shadow. Which in both cases is not a whole lot. All right. The Penitent One. Power Word Radiance has a 50% chance to cause your next penance to be free and fire three extra bolts. Okay. Crystalline Reflection. Power Word Shield instantly heals the target for 436 and reflects 30% of damage absorbed. That's kind of cool. I like that's That seems pretty thematic. Kiss of Death reduces Shadow Word Death's cooldown by 8 seconds and causes its damage to trigger Atonement. What? That sounds kind of cool, actually. Yeah, that does sound kind of kind of cool, like just for being out there, like doing stuff by yourself, like shadow or death to finish something off and then you get atonement. Wait a second. Triggers atonement on what? On you? I'm not sure. I'm still in disbelief that you're looking at this. 
<laughs> I don't hate Priest. It's just my least played class. That's all it is. And it's my least played class because I don't know. I just like have never really been into it. I started to get into the sh into Shadow and then they just like screwed it all up. And then they went and they took away the speed boost on discipline when you could just like bubble speed boost all the time. And I was like, ugh, why are you doing this? Clarity of mind. During Rapture, Power Word Shield costs 20% less mana and applies six second longer atonements. Yeah. Uh, the priest pro is over here, but, you know. Uh, yeah, me, I think I'm, I'm taking this one. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. <laughs> Freely admit it. We don't say you hate it. You love it. <laughs> no. Huh? Uh, for discipline? I just went over them. You're gonna... You can, you can, you can help me test them. Not now. I got a podcast to record in like an hour. <laughs> Look, Aggie's going to help me test them. She said so. Hold her to it. All right. That's Priest. Right? That was all Priest, right? I didn't miss anything. <laughs> uh, I didn't miss anything. You make me feel pain. Man, you guys uh, here. <laughs> Dude, look at this cool mount, though. Ah. All right, what's next? Do we have another one queued up? Or is it Rogue? Are we going straight into Rogue? I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't really have to no, That's account sharing. You can't do that. All right, let's check out Rogue. I'm a little excited for this. Like, Rogue, uh, I think I put Rogue in as, like, a potential Covenant main class. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep linking this out for you guys. And Gauss. And whatever. Oh, I can't. I can't. Stop. I'm too big to Rogue. And let's, let's vanish. Run away. Now let's go back to town. Oh, and we're on Outlaw, too. You know what's weird is I think after playing Outlaw, I don't know if I would uh, main Outlaw this expansion. I actually liked what Assassination and Subtlety were doing. Hey, lost. Okay. Put all of them out there. What did I? Huh? What? Huh? What are you talking about, Murphy? Let me in. I'm lost. I mean, I'm not lost. Lost is in the chat, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, all the rogues as possible Covenant main spec. Yeah, and that's because I don't know which one I would actually main. But, like, I think all of them had the potential to be good enough for me to main one of them um, as a Covenant main. All right, so we're Outlaw. And, woo, that's right. That's right. Rogue doesn't have any legendary powers right now. It's like, I think the only class that doesn't have any. And I don't think they have Torghast powers either. Blizz is just like, uh, you know what it is. The legendary powers are too sneaky. They're more rogue than the rogues are. <laughs> Warlock. All right, we're doing Warlock next. So sad all the priests are going in last. Probably... They probably are, but we're going to do, we're going to give it its due. Okay. I just like, I know there's potential for like shadow or discipline to not be in that tier, but I've just, I've heard shadow has not gotten really any better. Warlock. I'm actually excited about this now. 
because we just did the class deep dive for Warlock today and every single specialization was super fun to me. So uh, I'm pretty pumped. I think something in Warlock might end up in tier tier two or the A tier. Actually. Pretty good chance. And what are we right now? We're affliction, right? <clears throat> I need my burn and rush. Gotta go fast, but I can't kill myself. Um, just waiting for YouTube to flag me for saying that or something. I. Even though we all know what I'm talking about, okay? Well, let's go check out these Warlock Legendaries. And let's see if my brain can even comprehend them, because I am not... Uh... Not a, like, super experienced Warlock player. Like, for context, when I say super experienced, I mean, I don't play the crap out of these and, like, know them in and out. Greg says, I have fond memories of playing Warlock back in the day. Greg, we all do. Never forget Mana Burn. I don't have those memories, guys. Okay. <laughs> Not me. I just, like, in Classic, you couldn't just, like, make every alt to max level and, like, also exist outside of the game. So Warlock was not something that I ever got to max level then. Uh, okay, so Wilfred's Sigil of Superior Summoning. Every soul shard you spend reduces the cooldown of Summon Demonic Tyrant by 0.3%. Oh, we're Demonology. Okay, cool. We're Demonology right now. Okay, so every soul shard we spend, which as we saw, is pretty easy to get soul shards. Uh, 0.3 seconds. See, I'm I'm pretty sure that other one with Blood DK was 0.3 seconds, not not 30 seconds. That's ridiculous. Uh, Claw of Indereth. Drain life now deals damage and restores health 50% faster. That's actually kind of cool, except I never needed it. Uh, Mark of Borrowed Power. Call Dread Stalkers has a 25% chance to refund all soul shards spent. Wow, that's kind of nice. Pillars of the Dark Portal. Demonic Gateway is now instant cast and your first use of the gateway does not trigger its cooldown. Okay, like Demonic Gateway is an ability that I don't understand. Uh, mainly because I've never needed to use it in like solo content, which is most of what I've done with Warlock. So I don't know if that's good. Warlock players, tell me if that's any good. Uh, implosive potential. When implosion damages at least three targets, gain 5% haste for eight seconds for each imp exploded. Wow. So that's a little bit hard to set up the three target thing, but you guys saw, like, I had, like, ten imps, like, pretty easy. So that could be a ton of haste. Grim Inquisitor's Dread Calling. Each soul shard spent on Hand of Gul'dan increases the damage of your next Call Dread Stalkers by 3%. Okay. That's decent. Forces of the Horned Nightmare. Hand of Gul'dan has a 15% chance to cast a second time on your target for free. Wow. That's not a huge percentage, but that's a... That's insane, just like 10 imps out of nowhere. Why Why does it feel like a bunch of these are demonology specific when it should be like four and four, like four generic warlock ones? Am I missing something here? Pillars of Dark Portal is probably generic. But that's it? Veil Spider's Burning Core. Shadow Bolt increases the damage of your next demon bolt by 25% stacking up to five times. Four times, sorry. Uh, 
Man, I almost like didn't have to cast Shadow Bolt when I was running around doing stuff. But then again, I was fighting stuff a little bit lower, so maybe I would have to. I don't know. That's a lot of options. I think I like the Call Dreadstalkers one here. Mark a bar of power. Or implosive potential. I don't know. It's just really hard Like sometimes to line up three targets. And then if you do and you do something like this, like chances are you just like murdered at least one of them. And the other two are pretty low anyway. So all that haste, you probably don't even need it. This one's pretty cool too. Oh no, not that one. Uh, this one, the Hand of Gul'dan casting a second time for free seems pretty insane. <clears throat> Gateways for raiding. Yeah, that's what I figured. Oh, let's check out Affliction. Okay, so, okay, so a couple of these are generic, but the ability, the effect changes. So this one is your Summon Dark Glare cooldown. Uh, the Drain Life one is generic. Uh, the Gateway is generic. Okay. Uh, Malefic Rapture has a 10% chance to refund all Soul Shards spent. It only spends one, so that's not that crazy. 10% is pretty low. Uh, let's see. Agony has a 20% increased chance to generate a soul shard. That actually seems pretty nice. Since that outside of talents, at least, is like the only way to generate soul shards. Sacralash's Dark Strike. Corruption damage is increased by 15% and any target affected by your corruption also has their movement speed slowed by 15%. Okay, just seems solid. Malefic Wrath. Malefic Rapture increases the damage of your Shadow Bolt by 25% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. That's actually kind of cool, because once you burn out Malefic Rapture, then you basically are Shadow Bolting or redotting. So, kind of a powerful... And, I mean, when I was doing it, like, 3 or 4 Malefic Wraths actually seemed pretty normal. And then Targets... I'm assuming that die with your agony applied to them grants you wrath of consumption, increasing all periodic damage dealt by 5% for 20 seconds, stacking up to five times. Okay. These are all like pretty, pretty like mathy, I think, but they seem good at first glance. Destruction. I really like destruction and uh, I thought like it was going to be my go to for sure. Um, but I actually had a lot of fun with both of the other two in their Shadowlands iterations. All right, so we get a reduction on Summon Infernal. We got the Drain Life. Chaos Bolt has a 5% chance to refund all Soul Shards spent. Demonic Gateway, and here we go. Odier, Shawl of the... And the Mjormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormormorm
gals. Uh, let's just go down the list. Warrior. Let's do it. What is Aggie's favorite pre-spec? What? What is Aggie's favorite pre-spec? I don't know. She don't want to answer. What are you telling me for? Come over here and tell them. I'm not going to relay this like eight paragraph message. You got to get close to the mic, though. You got to be like right here. Um, I like holy if I'm just kind of having fun, enjoying a place. But if I'm playing the character to enjoy the character, I like discipline because it's um a little more high demand. Challenge. <clears throat> And she likes shadow when she's super tired and has bags under her eyes. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Couldn't resist. Okay, we are Fury. All right, let's check it out. Now, I haven't done the deep dive for Warrior yet, uh, but I did kind of play around with it a bit, and it is what I have mained in BFA. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar. Heroic Leap gains two additional charges. Insane. Uh, I love that for mobility. Uh, let's see. Seismic reverberation. If Whirlwind hits three or more enemies, it hits them one additional time. Okay. Misshapen Mirror. Spell reflection lasts 200% longer and applies to your party. The hell? It already lasts five seconds. So, wow. That's insane. And, man, I don't even know if I would, that just, it doesn't seem fun, but it seems so good, especially in, like, particular fights. Signet of Tormented Kings, activating Blade Storm, Recklessness, or Avatar, randomly cast one of the other two abilities at reduced effectiveness. That's actually kind of cool. You like, Avatar into Blade Storm, or Avatar into Recklessness. Uh... Huh. Yeah, that seems pretty fun. So those should be the generic ones. So for Fury, Cadence of the whatever. Bloodthirst increases your haste by 2% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 4 times. Uh, Okay. I don't love that. Uh, Deathmaker, your rampage has a 25% chance to apply the Siege Breaker effect to your target for five seconds. Uh, what was Siege Breaker? Uh, talent, I believe, maybe? Yes. Breaking the enemy's defenses, dealing physical damage, and increasing your damage done to the target by 15% for 10 seconds. So Rampage has a 25% chance to apply Siege Breaker. That actually seems kind of cool. Uh, reckless Defense. Rampage Critical Strikes reduce your recklessness and rage regeneration cooldown by three, per three seconds. And then Will of the Berserker. When recklessness expires, your critical strike is increased by 5% for five seconds. Your Raging Blow will refresh the duration of this effect. I just don't like uh, stuff like this that's tied into long cooldowns. But that's just me. Like, that's that's my play style. Um, so I'd rather do something like Rampage, where I have this chance, like, pretty frequently. Um, something like that. I don't know. Not, not too, too crazy. Not too excited about those. Arms. I don't really like the changes to arms in BFA. I like the Legion arms. Enduring Blow. Your Mortal Strike has a 15% chance to apply the Colossus Smash effect to your target for 5 seconds. Okay. Uh, Battle Lord. Your Slam has a 30% chance to reset the cooldown of Mortal Strike. That's actually kind of nice. Exploiter Execute causes the target to take 25% more damage. From your next two mortal strikes, stacking up to two times. Uh, weird. 
seems like mainly like a boss ability. And then unhinged, while Bladestorm is active, you automatically cast a total of two mortal strikes at random nearby enemies. <laughs> Thematically, I like that one. Uh, that seems kind of fun. All right, let's check out Prot. Uh, let's see. Can Fury have one-handers now? Yes. <laughs> Lost. Basically, Aggie said, go play this. <laughs> uh, you love this now. Okay, Prot. This is what I'm uh, probably more excited about here. Thunderlord. Each enemy you hit with Thunderclap reduces the remaining cooldown and demoralizing shout by three seconds. That's actually pretty cool because I like that combo. And demoralizing shout is really nice to have up if you are talented into it. Uh, wherever the talent is. I don't know where it's. Here it is. Booming voice. So that would be pretty useful. The wall. Shield slam generates an additional two rage and reduces the main remaining cooldown on shield wall by four seconds. You shield slam quite a bit. So that seems useful too. Unbreakable will. Your shield wall ability now grants 50% of its effect to all party members. Also super cool. And Reprisal, the first intercepted attack against you. Against what? You ignore pain and make your next revenge cost. No rage. <laughs> what? The first intercepted attack grants you ignore pain and makes your next revenge cost. No rage. Okay. Got it. Not excited about it. Uh, I like the prot ones. I like the fact that there's like quite a few there that um, let you utilize some of your like really good abilities more frequently. And I also like that like shield wall applied to party thing. That's pretty cool. I like the the whole like, hey, let's work together sort of legendaries. Also, I didn't turn the sound back on, but we're going to get there. We did Paladin, Death Knight, Rogue, Paladin, Death Knight, Shaman. We still got Shaman, and we got Mage. Holy is Shiny Heels. Shiny, are you a man or a crow? He's a crow man. Or a man crow. What's for dinner today, guys? All right, Shaman, let's see what's going on. Shaman, I think, has had the biggest changes between uh, Elemental and Enhancement. Mostly Enhancement. So I think some of these legendaries are going to be a little hard to get a read on. Right. So we are currently restoration. All right. So ancestral reminder, bloodlust or any similar effects last an additional 20 seconds on you and you gain an extra 10% haste from any bloodlust type effect. Okay. So super steroid. Deep, temp Ugh. Deep tremor stone. Earth Elemental has a permanent earthquake attached to it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Deeply Rooted Elements. Casting Riptide has a 5% chance to activate Ascendance for 6 seconds. Wow, really? I mean, 5% is really low. Uh, but that's still kind of cool. Chains of Devastation. Casting Chain Heal makes your nest next chain lightning instant cast casting chain lightning makes your next chain heal instant cast <laughs> uh that is your monogon super quick jonat's natural focus healing wave and healing surge increase the healing done by your next chain heal by zero percent stacking up to zero times jonat has zero focus uh, assuming those numbers are actually not zero. 
So basically, your single target stuff will pump up your next AoE heal. Okay. Spirit Walker's Tidal Totem. After using Monotide Totem, the cast time of Healing Wave and Chain Heal is reduced by 50%, and the mana cost of Chain Heal and Healing Wave is reduced by 100% for 10 seconds. Okay. Cast time of Healing Wave and Chain Heal is reduced. Okay. The mana cost of Chain Heal and Healing Wave is reduced. Okay, so they're free, and they cast 50% faster after using Monotide Totem. Which one's Monotide Totem? I don't... There we go. Three-minute cooldown. Oof. Uh, Primal Tide Core. Every four cast of Riptide also applies Riptide to another friendly target near your Riptide target. That's actually pretty useful. Earth and Harmony. Earth Shield healing is increased by 300%. If your Earth Shield target is below 50% health and Healing Wave oh, is increased by 300% if your Earth Shield target is below 50% health. And Healing Wave adds a stack of Earth Shield to your target up to 9 maximum stacks. Huh. So you can kind of like auto-cast some Earth Shield. That's interesting. Check out Elemental. All right, what do we got? Casting Lava Burst has a 5%. Okay, so casting something has a 5% chance to activate Ascendance. That's like across the board. Okay, Skybreaker's Fiery Demise. Flame Shock damage over time. Critical Strikes reduce the cooldown of Fire Elemental by one second, and Flame Shock has a 30% increased Critical Strike chance. It's actually not terrible. Elemental Equilibrium. Dealing direct fire damage increases the damage of your next frost spell by 30%. Dealing frost damage increases the damage of your next nature spell by 25%. Dealing nature damage increases the damage of your next fire spell by 20%. Okay, so they want you to go fire, frost, nature, fire, frost, nature, fire, frost, nature. So, Flame Shock, maybe, no, Lava Burst, probably Lava Burst, Frost Shock, Lightning Bolt, or Lava shock, lava Burst, Frost Shock, uh, Chain Lightning. Echoes of Great Sundering. When you consume six or more stacks of Fulmination with Earth Shock, your next Earthquake will be instant cast and deal 6% additional damage. But it probably does that through a buff that maybe wears off before you actually want to cast Earthquake. Maybe. Wind Speaker's Lava Resurgence. When you consume six or more stacks of Fulmination with Earthshock and gain Lava Surge and increase the damage of your next Lava Burst by 6%. Man, did we just go through all the like crazy weird stuff already? Like These are all very, very just... Regular talent sounding. Like, overpowered regular talent sounding. All right, Doom Winds. Dropping Wind Fury Totem grants you a 100% increased chance to gain Wind Fury Weapon for 8 seconds. That is absolutely nuts. This can only occur once every 1 minute. Okay, that's actually pretty strong, it sounds like. Legacy of the Frost Witch. Consuming five stacks of Maelstrom Weapon will reset the cooldown of Storm Strike and cause your next Storm Strike to deal 100% increased damage. That would probably really help with the flow of enhancement because uh, right now it feels a little wonky. But man, I feel like they should just fix that and not like put it in a legendary. Witch Doctor's Wolf Bones. Increase the chance to gain a stack of Maelstrom Weapon by 5%. And whenever you gain a stack of Maelstrom Weapon, the cooldown of Feral Spirits is reduced by two seconds. It's pretty strong. And Primal Lava Actuators. Each time Flame Shock deals periodic damage, increase the damage of your next Lava Lash by 10% and reduce the cooldown of Lava Lash by 0.5 seconds. Huh. Okay. 
So flame shock damage will increase every time. It doesn't say what the max stacks is and reduces the cooldown by 0.5 seconds. So you probably get like five or six stacks of that, I imagine. So like 60% increase, but you get to cast Lava Lash uh, more frequently. It's not as exciting as some of the other ones, but I mean, in practice, that might actually be kind of, kind of nice. All right, I know we got Mage left. Let's see, we've done Paladin, Warrior, and Death Knight, the Plate Wearers. We've done Shaman and Hunter now, the male. And let's see, we've done Demon Hunter, Rogue, Druid, and Monk. Those are all, yep, so Mage is the last, last one we have to go over. Okay, let's see. Do I have a mage? This one is in Ouroboros. Alexander, hello. <clears throat> Catching the tail end here. We're going over the last class legendaries, which just so happen to be mage. All right, now it looks like we are, were we arcane? I think we're arcane. Yes. Okay. So what do we got? Generics up top. Okay, expanded potential. Your fireball, frostbolt, and arcane blast have a chance to give you expanded potential, which causes your next hot streak, brain freeze, or clear casting to not be consumed. Wow, that's actually kind of cool. Man, like a double cast hot streak pyroblast, that's pretty nuts. But you gotta get there with fireball. <laughs> eh. Disciplinary command, casting a frost fire and arcane spell within 10 seconds of each other, which you can do now, uh, increases your critical strike damage of all your spells by 10%. This effect can only occur once every 30 seconds. Okay. I don't know if I like that. Because you're basically going to have to cast Fireball, uh, Frostbolt, and Arcane Explosion, I think. Obviously, you can swap out a different one based on the spec that you are, but like for Frost and Fire, I think... Arcane Explosion is the only thing you have access to. Actually, they don't have to be offensive. Well, that's what makes them arcane, I guess. Uh, okay, Grizzly Icicle. Your frost fire and arcane damage against enemies affected by Frost Nova is increased by 10% and no longer breaks it. That's kind of cool. Temporal Warp. While you have Temporal Displacement or other similar effects, you may use Time Warp at a reduced effectiveness, granting 15% haste for 20 seconds. Oh, okay. So you can, like, keep warping after you use Time Warp. All right, so Arcane Specific, Arcane Infinity. Increase the damage done by Arcane Missiles by 10%. Each time Arcane Missiles hits an enemy, the damage of your next Arcane Barrage is increased by 2%. This effect stacks. Okay. <clears throat> Arcane Missiles. I don't know. It launches five waves, so you're getting 10% uh, increased damage on your next Barrage. Arcane Bombardment. Arcane Barrage deals an additional 40% health against targets below 35% health. 40% damage against targets below 35% health. So better execute capability there. Siphon Storm. Evocation grants two arcane charges, and while channeling evocation, your intellect is increased by 2% every 0.9 seconds. Last 30 seconds. And our evocation channel is 5.6 seconds. 
Uh, so we get about 10% increased intellect and two arcane charges out of that on a one and a half minute cooldown. I think... Okay. Uh, let's see. Triune Ward. Casting any barrier spell grants the effects of Blazing Barrier, Ice Barrier, and Prismatic Barrier. Each Absorb Shield has 40% effectiveness. Okay. You get all the barriers, I guess. Do Arcane last? Too bad. I'm already here. <laughs> uh, Frost. I gotta end on a bang with fire, man. Uh, just notice, how's your wrist? Uh, my wrist is still bad, but my fingers are fine, and I don't use my, don't really use my wrist uh, <clears throat> to play, so. Okay, okay, okay. So for frost, slick ice. While icy veins is active, each frost bolt you cast reduces the cast time of frost bolt by five percent, stacking up to ten times. So we can like icy veins, thirty percent haste, and then on top of that, we just fling out a bunch of frost bolts, and they get faster and faster and faster. That seems like it's probably pretty fun. Cold front casting fifteen. Frost bolts or flurries calls down a frozen orb on your target. Hitting an enemy player counts as double. Huh. That's kind of cool. Freezing winds. While frozen orb is active, you gain fingers of frost every 5.2 seconds. While frozen orb is not active, each frost bolt reduces the cooldown of frozen orb by 2.5 seconds. So a little bit of like an ability weave thing there too. And then glacial fragments. Ice Lance has a 15% chance to explode into shards of ice when it hits a target, dealing 413 frost damage to up to five enemies near your target. This chance is increased to 50% if your target is standing in a blizzard. That sounds kind of cool. It's like a shotgun ice lance. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, but we have to wake up, wake up people after Arcane now. <laughs> We're waking them up with fire. All right, let's check it out. Let's see. Each consecutive critical strike you deal increases critical strike damage you deal by 2% fevered incantation. I don't know. Those numbers seem small, but maybe it's just because I've been playing Path of Exile. Uh, Firestorm. When Hot Streak activates, you have a low chance to cause all Pyroblast and Flame Strikes to have no cast time and be guaranteed critical strikes for five seconds. What? <laughs> I mean, it's a low chance, but it's still probably fun as hell when you get it. But I mean, how fun is it when it's not relatively consistent? Molten Skyfall, casting 30 fireballs or pyroblast calls down a meteor on your target. Hitting an enemy player counts as double. That sounds pretty fun, actually. And I think you can maybe get up to that number a little faster than Frost does. And then Sun King's Blessing, after consuming six hot streaks, your next non-instant pyroblast cast within 15 seconds grants you combustion for six seconds. Wow. So 100% critical strike chance and a bunch of mastery. After consuming six hot streaks, which doesn't take that long, honestly. Mm, pretty strong. It's like the Death Drill thing. <laughs> All right, everybody, that is going to do it for the stream. We have taken a look at all the legendaries, gone through the list, and just kind of seen what's available. Obviously, um, as we make our way into beta even further, we're going to be testing these legendaries out. And to do that, we're going to have to, you know, I, I don't even know how much testing is going to go into that because that's like four legendaries per spec plus four legendaries per class. It's a lot of testing, a lot of stuff. 
Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but the intention that I have is to focus on testing the class gameplay. So um, for future streams, legendaries, soul binds, conduits, um, and maybe like a five to 10 floor Torghast run for all the specializations. That's like where I'm headed with this beta testing. Um, so if that's what you're into, uh, be sure to stay tuned to the channel for more streams. And if you're new here and that sounds like stuff that you're going to want to watch, hit that subscribe button and, uh, you know, you'll get notified whenever live streams go out and, uh, when we start doing that testing. So you guys don't forget to, to throw a like on the video. If you enjoy it, if you had fun, I have got to go and rest my voice because I'm going to be recording this podcast here, I think, in uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I'm going to need to get some hot tea or something. Um, but all right, you guys have a good one. Uh, we'll see. I should be back tonight or tomorrow, depending, for the final deep dive live stream with Warrior and Priest. So you guys have a good time. Have a good weekend. I hope you're having fun in whatever it is that you're doing. And as always, I'll see you on the next stream.